Great. Uh, thanks for your patience, all. Uh, we have we are ready to start now. So, firstly, thank you all for joining us today to learn more about the Bahrain's ecosystem and your opportunity, of course, uh, to expand into the Middle East for those uh, based out of Australia. Uh, firstly, thank you again for joining us. Uh, this event serves as your gateway to Bahrain's thriving ecosystem, providing a strategic overview of the untapped potential for Australian fintechs in the Middle East and North Africa. Um, in this webinar, we will look at Bahrain's business-friendly environment, success stories, and finally, uh, a few fireside chats with Varency and Yonder Money. Um, so uh, to begin with, I would like to welcome Nawal Nazir, Senior Associate Education and Research at the Bahrain Fintech Bay. Nawal, over to you. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for the very kind introduction, uh, Rehan. Um, so as Rehan said, my name is uh, Nawal Nazir, Senior Associate at Bahrain Fintech Bay, and I primarily look after um, the education and research initiatives uh, at Bahrain Fintech Bay. I've been with the team since inception in 2018, and um, you know it is a pleasure to have everyone here, along with some of the key stakeholders of the um, fintech ecosystem. So just give me a second to pull up uh, the slides and then um, I'll just get started. It's gonna be a very brief uh, go through of what we do at Bahrain Fintech Bay and what is the ecosystem here looking like. So I will be briefly going over what we do at Bahrain Fintech Bay and uh, we'll be happy to take any questions at the uh, end of the session, all right? Um, so firstly, to begin with, we are considered as the Fintech ecosystem builder here in Bahrain. Uh, where we are delivered with a mandate to support and advance the local fintech ecosystem here. Um, we are recognized as one of the most large, uh, we're recognized as one of the largest, most active and engaged fintech hubs in the Middle East. And we have eight core pillars that we focus on, and I will be going into detail for each of these. Starting with foreign direct uh, investment to Bahrain, we work very closely with the EDB, which is the Economic Development Board, to bring in international fintechs and forging global partnerships. Um, investing in Bahrain, obviously, as you can see on the screen, has a lot of advantages as we have an attractive financial proposition, a skilled workforce, low barriers to entry, as well as access to the GCC market. Moving on. Uh, we work on research and thought leadership pieces to help increase the level of awareness in the country. Uh, one of our most recent publications is the Digital Retail Banking Benchmark Report that provides um, an overarching view of the digital advancements within the banking sector. Uh, we will soon also be launching our second report, which will be, which will be based on the uh, adoption of the open banking in Bahrain and the broader region. So, you know, if anybody's interested to learn more about what's happening in Bahrain specifically, um, you can refer to our reports, especially the Bahrain Fintech Ecosystem Report that gives you an understanding of what the ecosystem looks like in Bahrain in terms of like, what are the trending verticals? What are the, what are the more concentrated verticals? Where are the opportunities? Where are the gaps? And so on. So this knowledge sharing feeds into our conferences and events as well, where again, we work on discussing some of the trending topics and bringing in um, renowned international speakers to share their knowledge and expertise here in Bahrain. Um, uh, we actually recently hosted the inaugural FinTech Forward event and plan to do a second edition again, I think this year in uh, October, I think it's the first week of October. Uh, moving on, uh, we also aim to establish the MENA Innovation Academy, where we will be delivering education and training programs for the financial services sector specifically. The focus is primarily on uh, courses that revolve around FinTech 101, leadership, FinTech strategy, and advanced technology such as AI. We also work on building partnerships with the financial services sector and beyond. Uh, we work on several fronts such as um, operational support, uh, access to market, marketing services, and so many more other services that come under the umbrella of uh, business development and advancement. So another pillar of, of, of uh, focus in is the FinTech Acceleration programs where we work specifically with the industry to develop programs that will assist them in accelerating their product development through idea generation, mentorship sessions, and uh, and other sorts of programs that help them address their specific industry challenges and come up with a solution that makes sense to them. 
Our seventh pillar is residency, of course, where we are home to local and international startups, providing them with a co-working space and access to a network of individuals and companies uh, to facilitate their growth. Lastly, we have the i for bh initiative that we are launching. Um, this is uh, launched by the Supreme Council for Women and operated by Bahrain Fintech Bay, but this is something that we're very excited about. It is basically a space for tech enthusiasts and the youth uh, where we are ultimately promoting uh, gender diversity within the tech community, right? So uh, there are various programs such as career development, ideation development, uh, as well as short courses that can support the growth of the tech community in Bahrain. Um, obviously, this is a separate entity to Bahrain Fintech Bay, which, will, will, which we will be operating uh, and will be launched ideally soon within uh, the next couple of months. So this covers our eight pillars. Uh, but in the last couple of years, Bahrain has opened its door to several international fintechs. Um, of course, it helps that Bahrain has been a regional pioneer on several fronts. Um, we were the first in the MENA region to introduce the regulatory sandbox, launch regulations on open banking and crypto assets. We were also the first to introduce cloud-first policy and 5G communications. Um, we are ranked amongst the top 100 destinations for startups globally. Our other counterparts in neighboring countries are Hub71, Fintech Hive, um, Fintech Saudi, and Qatar Fintech Hub. But what makes us distinct from the rest is that we are privately owned and driven by the industry rather than being a government organization. So um, that's how we set ourselves apart from the rest of the uh, of, of, our, of our counterparts. Um, lastly, before I close, I would just like to share an overview of the fintech landscape map of the active fintechs in Bahrain. There are over 120 fintechs operating in Bahrain with over 135 of these incubated at Bahrain Fintech Bay. So as you can see, it's a very diverse um, group of fintechs that we have here. And obviously we are open to welcoming more and more fintechs from different parts of the world. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for um, listening to me and I'll be happy to take any questions as well. Thank you. As Noel mentioned, if you have any questions, please feel, feel free to pop it up on the chat. Uh, yeah. Or we could take the questions right towards the end as well. Uh, but thanks, right. Noel. Perfect. Thank you, Rahan. Great. Um, just a few takeaways from what you've mentioned, Noel. Uh, of course, Australia has also been uh, one of the leading innovators uh, in the open banking space, taking a slightly different approach with consumer data, right? And how that um, includes open banking as well. So I'm sure there are some great cross-border learnings between the two regions and opportunities for Bahrain fintechs that are looking at Australia and simultaneously Australian fintechs that are looking to uh, provide their services to Bahrain. Um, so yeah, I think that's an opportunity there. And also with your report, as you've mentioned, we also have a report with uh, that we do with EY. So there may be some good learnings to share between the two reports to see where there are strengths in Bahrain that um, Australia can access, and there are strengths in Australia that Bahrain can access. Thank you. Uh, moving on, uh, I'd like to invite now Abdul Mohsen Bushahiri, Managing Director of Bring Global Middle East. Hello. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Rehan. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to take five minutes to share our uh, success story in, in Bahrain. Um, I work for a company called Brink Global. Um, we've got offices in, in Europe, South America, Africa, and, and the Middle East. Um, we we opened our office in Bahrain uh, back in, um, I think it was December 2021. Um, I took over uh, in 2022. Um, and uh, the story has been um, a story of success uh, since then. Uh, what we do at Brink Global is we do... Um, um, digital transformations for fintechs and um, financial institutions, banks, insurance companies, so on and so forth. Um, we've done over 30 of these um, globally. Um, we, we set up shop in Bahrain because we were interested in the entire ecosystem. So um, when I say the entire ecosystem, I'm, I'm referring to, of course, the central bank, Bahrain Fintech Bay, Tim Keen, and the EDB, um, because they all work together uh, in a seamless manner. Um, we get we get subsidies uh, from Tim Keen. 
we get um, support for anything that is bureaucratic or government related from, from the EDB. We get business development support um, from Bahrain Fintech Bay. Now, you know, and they, they introduce us to customers not only in Bahrain, but also in the wider region. And of course, uh, you know, the central bank, they 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 also help us with um with the regulations. One of the offers, one of the things that we, we do offer is, for example, uh, open banking. So uh, we work closely with the central bank on, on that. So this entire ecosystem has really helped us become very successful in a very short um, period of time. And what makes um, Bahrain great is I see Bahrain as a springboard for the rest of the region. Uh, we started off in Bahrain. We, we, we worked with a few customers, built a few case studies, um, and then took took these case studies to, let's say, larger markets such as Saudi, Kuwait, Qatar, um, all of the other countries in the Gulf. Um, and we have successfully been working outside of Bahrain ever since. Um, it is, let's say, a gateway, um, especially to Saudi, uh, because, because we are so close to them. But not just Saudi, it applies to the wider region. We we also now work outside the Gulf. We work with companies in, with one company in Egypt and one 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 bank in 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 Jordan. Um, so yeah, I hope uh, I hope I'm good with time, Rehan. Uh, let me know if I if I was. Um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Well, if anyone has any further questions, please reach out. But thank you, Abdul Mohsen. Uh, definitely a valuable resource for anyone that's looking to expand into Bahrain. Uh, moving to our next speaker, and this is part of our fireside chat session. I'd like to invite Shane Chanel, co-founder and CEO of Yon the Money. Uh, Shane, how are you? Hi, everyone. How are you? Uh, nice to have you, Shane. Um, so let's kick this off. I'd like to first start with just the basic, most basic question, right? Tell us about your money for the audience here who doesn't know what you do. Um, what is your unique value proposition? What do you do? Yeah, awesome. Um, and and uh, thanks for, for the Bahrain team for organizing this. It's great. Um, you know, we, we see a lot of opportunity in the GCC region. So uh, we're excited to to uh, to help uh, uh, share share our learnings and uh, and hopefully encourage other people to, to set up in Bahrain um, you know, with a view for the for the greater GCC region. Um, look, so you're the money. I'm a, a Shane, we're based out of Melbourne uh, in Australia. Um, I'm the co-founder of Yonder, which is now a group of, of three three organisations. Um, so Yonder Money is uh, the, the best way to describe it is, is as a digital bank. Um, so we do you know cards, accounts, uh, rewards, loyalty, um, personal financial management tools, open banking. Um, on you know onboarding flows, like a whole, whole bunch of uh, of features and benefits, multi currency accounts, um, so you can have uh, 20, 24 currencies within your wallet um, at any point in time. So uh, the, the yonder yonder is our, our B two C uh, business. We recently acquired a, a fairly large uh, nano gifting um, fintech here in in Australia. Uh, they've got uh, you know about fifty thousand customers. Um, you know, cater for uh, you know, likes of AFL and number of B two B businesses, and so really focusing on on rewards and loyalty because you know at the end of the day, you, you've got you can have the best financial product, you know, best cards in the world, but you've got to have all your value added features that that uh, customers uh, want to use. Um, and then the last company that um, that that that's come about after after our last funding round was uh, is Cobble. Um, so Cobble is 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 quite interesting because it was born out of our pain points creating Yonder. Um, you know, Yonder took us a few years to create, um, and it's essentially an infrastructure layer that allows other fintechs uh, and uh, non non bank financials, retailers, and banks to take products into market really quickly and cheaply. So basically, everything Yonder is providing, it's it's providing that as a bank in a box solution essentially. So. Uh, and I'm happy, happy to uh, touch into that uh, as we go along. Thanks, Shane. Um, yeah, really exciting times, of course. Congratulations on the um, the acquisition, and just the sounds all going to be a big year for you for sure. Um, so my next question, of course, uh, you're based out of Australia, Melbourne. You started off to launch your product and solution in Australia. Uh, very different market, of course, from the Middle East and from the opportunity that is, that's in the Middle East. 
So a two-part question here. How do you see your services work in Australia? And later, how do you see you expand these services to be offered in the Middle East? Yeah, no, good question. Uh, I mean, I feel like I've spent more time in the Middle East over the last 12 months than I have in Australia. Um, so uh, look, we, we, we see we see that the, the, the uh, you know, similar to what Mohsen said, focusing on on a specific country and getting it right. So, you know, Bahrain, get your product right in Bahrain, but have a view for the, the broad GCC region, right? Um, but you've got to start somewhere and make sure make sure you get a little bit of traction, understand the market, understand the region. Um, and look, we, we see the region growing so rapidly. Um, you know, by 2030, it's expected that there's going to be over 2,000 fintechs in in the GCC region. You know, over over 1,000 non-backed financials. Um, and so we we recently uh, we were part of the Qatar Innovation Program, um, part of the Accelerator, and uh, we got investment from the Qatar Development Bank uh, on the back of that. Um, and like I mentioned, you know, Cobble and the the, the what excites us about the region and and what we're bringing is. We are essentially the enabler, the infrastructure layer. Now, Yonder took us about two to three years to develop from scratch. Now, other fintechs, as you set those products up, you know, you don't want to be building everything from scratch. So, uh, what, what uh, I guess that you know, the the our investors and in, in the region uh, and and why we're focused on the region is we expect to to be able to bring uh, the adoption of financial technology forward. Because people could come to us and, and get you know, cards out of the box or wallets out of the box and transaction monitoring out of the box, rewards and loyalty and the, the rest of it, and be able to introduce a product to market, quickly test it out. If customers like it, great. If if not, they can pivot, they can they can change things, and and, it, and that could take them maybe you know six months to a year, as opposed to having to build everything from scratch uh, and you know trying to do everything. And then running out of money, right? Um, so really, we really focus on being that enabler uh, to provide a platform that can expedite fintechs with our white label offerings. Thanks, Shane. Yes, it's all about the speed to market, right? So that you're one of the first movers or early movers in the space, so that you can really access that consumer base. So thank you. Um, uh, moving on. So why is Disrupting the financial innovation is so important for Bahrain and the region. Look, I think ultimately, um, the so we've been speaking to a number of banks within within the region uh, in GCC, and and what they've said to us is, uh, you know, the cost to serve for them to serve one of their customers, the existing customers, it's over three hundred dollars, right? When you compare that to what we're doing, we're, we're almost a thousand percent cheaper. You know, so so being a tenth of the cost. To serve a customer, who pays for that? Ultimately, the customer pays for that, and in, in some way, form, right? And and a lot of the uh, a lot of the uh, I guess migrant migrant workers within within the region, they they don't even make that sort of amount to, for for the banks to justify to bring them on board as a customer. And this is where fintechs can have a big impact, right? They can have a, a low you know an innovative product that's that's low cost. Um, so essentially, it's it's going to be better, faster, cheaper. Right, it'll provide financial inclusion, a um, you know, better customer experience that's innovative, seamless, faster, you know, with a cr credit decisioning, uh, speed of transactions, um, and uh, cheaper in terms of you know the cost uh, cost of transactions, um, and ultimately that that financial inclusion and you know greater greater um, spend and 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 lending uh, within within the region is what's going to help the the economy grow. Thanks, Shane. Um, so, yes, just moving on from there, just final two questions for you here is, do you have any recent other achievements or announcements that you'd like to share? Of course, you mentioned about the uh, acquisition, but anything else? Um, mate, look, we've been, we've been pretty pretty focused on a number of things, but we've, we've recently got a couple of, uh, or a, a significant license here in Australia, which is a additional financial services license. Um, closed closed a, a good round at the end of last year, which is which is great, and that's expedited our growth uh, domestically and, and overseas. Uh, and there's a few announcements that we probably can't make uh, publicly yet, so um, yeah, pretty excited to to share those shortly. I look forward to hearing those announcements, Shane. Um, and so for people in Bahrain. And in Australia, for those who want to connect with you, how's the best way, best place to reach out to you? Yeah, feel feel free to to add me directly on LinkedIn. Uh, search Shane Chanel. 
um, and you hopefully should find me uh, or uh, reach out to the Bahrain team or, or the FinTech Show team through the Rihan. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be happy to, to have a chat. And whether that's for advice or, or recommendations or, or anything, feel free to reach out. Thanks, Shane. Uh, we have a few questions here, and we'll touch on these questions after we finish the last fireside chat. So I'm going to jump onto the fireside chat before we jump into Q&A. Uh, but please keep your questions coming in. Thanks, Shane. Thanks again. Uh, next, I'd like to invite Jerome Vanson, CEO of Verency, another member of Fintech Australia. Um, so Jerome, thanks for joining us today. Uh, just jumping straight, straight into the questions here. Uh, firstly, for the audience, what does Verency do? Thanks for having me, uh, Rahan, and thank you for the Bahrain uh, community for hosting us. Much appreciated. So at Verency, we, we are a, a software as a service platform uh, that helps established financial institutions, so banks, to innovate faster and quicker and cheaper around the moment of payment. So it's heavily focused on debit, credit, digital wallets, all those payments moments that we provide value-added services um, around the um, the idea is for a an established bank to be able to be as nimble as a neo bank or a fintech, and and dare I say, that enables that bank to compete with some of the big tech companies, and you know that enables banks to deliver the same set of services services and quality of services that they expect nowadays from you know the Amazons and the eBay's and the Spotify's of the world that are all sort of presenting the customer with real time in the moment relevant uh, offers and solutions. So that is what uh, what Verency is designed to do. We're very mindful that our role is to service financial institutions. So we are very secure. We're PCI DSS 4.0 compliant. Our solution is built for industrial scale and frankly to make it easy for a banker to buy the solution um so that's the that's where we come from in more recent times we've taken a um, a new direction and our new direction is very focused on sustainability and esg and we have developed a carbon calculator uh, that enables a cardholder to be aware of the impact uh, of their consumption on the environment so if you buy you know, if you buy a um, a meal at a restaurant, we will be able to calculate what the carbon emissions are for that transaction. And then we'll be able to allow you to offset that transaction by buying off, uh, carbon offset credits, all in real time, all completely seamless for the consumer, um, embedded within the payments flow. So that's what we uh, that's what we do. Awesome, really exciting, Sharon, and I think such an important value for the industry where the consumer now demands, of course, uh, to understand what their carbon footprint is and how they can offset it. So really um, valuable um, solution here. Um, do you have any key successes in Australia and other markets before we touch upon Middle East? Have you, uh, how has been your approach in Australia and any other market you've been in? Yeah, um, so in Australia, we provide the card linked offers gateway services for FTPOS and for uh, our Barani um, audience, FTPOS is the domestic debit scheme in Australia. It's about 52 million cards uh, that they have on issue in, in Australia. Um, and we are the wide label platform enabling the card linked offer services for, for FTPOS. Um, in other parts of the world, we have recently launched uh, a bank in Malaysia on our carbon service. Um, so that bank is Maybank, uh, the largest bank in, in Malaysia. And they they have bought into our strategy uh, that I articulated earlier. Um, so the majority of carbon or greenhouse gas emissions come from consumer expenditure. And, and Maybank is using our service within their digital banking app to enable their customers to live a carbon neutral life. So that was that was very cool. Um, and a little bit closer to home for the Bahraini audience, uh, we are very proudly supporting Emirates MBD um, 
through their live banking, uh, digital bank, uh, in, in enabling the hyper-personalization of Liv's credit account. Um, and, and I'm assuming that many of the audience have seen that service offering. Uh, but in a, in, in a nutshell, it enables a Live credit card holder to select their own benefits, the benefits that they perceive to be relevant for their lifestyle. Um, but it also enables um, a Live card holder to switch between credit, uh, credit card reward programs um, and the best analogy I can give there is, uh, you know, when when COVID hit a couple of years ago and and all flights were grounded, um, a lot of cardholders and customers weren't all that interested in in frequent flyer points rewards programs, but they much preferred a cashback program. Well, with this with a single click on the, on the button on a mobile phone screen, um, from the next transaction onwards, you can accrue cashback. Um, and when planes started flying again, just click a button on your mobile app and you can go back to um, accruing uh, figure flyer points. So thank you. Thank you. Um, so, uh, you know, congratulations on these, you know, already participating in these markets. Uh, so that's really exciting for you. Uh, so how do you think you're going to approach uh, and tackle the immense opportunity in the Middle East? Well, similar to the uh, the speakers before me um, and um, uh, Shane, who, who who I know from from Australia, by the way, very impressive uh, growth story there, Shane. Congratulations. Um, we we see an enormous amount of opportunity in the GCC region. Um, we we proudly support Emirates MBD live uh, already. And in our conversations in in the GCC part of the world, we see an immense amount of opportunities. Um, the way we plan to tackle that is both direct by being on the ground and talking to clients directly, but we also have a very powerful distribution agreement in place with Visa. Um, and of course, uh, Visa is the largest payments network in the world. And Visa it has uh, taken on our carbon solution within their network and they are uh, promoting that to their issuing bank clients uh, uh, in in uh, Central Europe, Middle East, and Africa, but also in the Asia Pacific region. Um, so if you if you do come across a Visa account executive talking about carbon offset products, uh, please remember that that is uh, the product that's provided by our company. So, thanks, Joe, and, and good luck to you. It's really exciting to have. You know, the backing and support from Visa as well to get access to that larger network base. Um, and lastly, uh, same question but that I asked Shane, do you have any more recent achievements or announcements that you'd like to share? Um, well, in, uh, in in fintech land, as as anyone uh, involved in it would probably attest to, um, every every day is a combination of uh, successes and failures, and sometimes we don't always take the opportunity to uh, to celebrate our successes. But uh, we've been incredibly proud to be able to launch Maybank in Malaysia. Um, Maybank. Uh, is wants to be the balance sheet behind the uh, sustainable energy transition within within their market, and and the ability to support a bank like that uh, through a retail proposition uh, on that journey is humbling, um, and and we're very very proud of that. Um, we are um, single digit weeks away from launching another bank in uh, in the same market there. Um, which we're, we're uh, hyper-focused on. Um, and we are far advanced with two large clients in uh, in Australia. Um, well, I wouldn't be doing my job if I would just focus on that. I'm also focused on inorganic growth and we're actively working on a merger and acquisition strategy. Um, similar to Shane, I can't reveal too much about that just yet, but watch this space. And hopefully in the next few weeks, we'll be able to announce uh, something there. And and similarly, uh, we're, we're working on our next equity capital raise, which I'm hoping to announce the market in by the middle to end of March. Lots happening and I'm sure really exciting times for you, keeping you on your toes. So uh, yeah, definitely exciting and congratulations, Sharon. Looking forward to hearing all of these exciting announcements from you. Um, 
Uh, but yes, just wanted to quickly note that, yeah, just your um, approach to expanding into these regions provides you access to such large markets, right, with Malaysia and then getting access to the rest of the Asia region with Bahrain and then getting access to the rest of the MENA region are incredible opportunities, such fast growing sectors uh, that you can access through your uh, product and solution. So yeah, all the best to you and it's gonna be really exciting. And for those who want to reach out mm -hmm. to you, potentially work with you, ask any further questions, what's the best place to get in touch with you? Yeah, I'll echo what uh, Shane said earlier. So please look me up on LinkedIn, uh, Jeroen Venson, um, LinkedIn profile, J-J-V-A-N-S-O-N. That's an easy one. Uh, but if you want to connect with me via email or mobile, I suggest uh, reach out to FinTech Australia, or I'm very happy for my contact details to be sent to the whole audience via Bahrain FinTech Bay as well. Thanks, Jeroen. Um, thank you all. Uh, we've had a few questions come in to the uh, to the Q and A, and I think the Bahrain Fintech Bay have already responded to some of them. Uh, but if anyone wants to take up the next questions, or would rather respond over um, uh, over a message or email later, please let me know. Uh, so there's a question from Hashim for Shane and Jerome specifically. Um, says, since I'm from the Sharia advisory sector, uh, can you share your view on the potential of Sharia compliant products in Australia within your line of offering? Uh, do you overlap a bit small between the product and Sharia compliance? Uh, so I understand that um, we don't really have Sharia compliant products. I know there are a few fintechs uh, based out of Indonesia that do try to um, attempt to provide some of these services into Australia. But do you have any other thoughts, Jeroen, Shane, on this? Uh, oh, I'm, I'm happy to go first. I can't see you Jeroen. So. <laughs> um, yeah, look, so it's a question we've been asked a number of times, especially uh, especially when we were in, in the Middle East. Um, and, uh, and the simple answer is yes. Um, now, it, it's uh, it, it's something that we we still have to do a lot a bit of work on, um, but the the objective is to uh, hopefully by the end of end of uh, end of this year uh, or, or middle of next year have have our our products that are also uh, share compliance and and for future products that make sure they get built with uh, share compliance in mind. And Shane, Sharon, do you have any other thoughts to share? Yeah, from our point of, point of view, we, we are neither an issuer nor a lender. So our products don't necessarily uh, very closely relate to Sharia law. Uh, that said, um, our products are designed to enrich a payments transaction in, in a variety of different ways. And those various ways are so broad that um, anyone who issues Sharia compliant uh, products can very easily select services and products around that that would fit within the Sharia compliance um, framework. Thanks, Ron. Yes, uh, and that's and that's a great way to uh, approach a solution when talking to uh, companies that are looking to, of course, be compliant with the Sharia laws. Um, Thank you. Thanks again, both uh, Shane, Sharon, and all the other speakers as well. Um, uh, we're going to wrap it up just in the interest of time, but we'll ensure that the questions are further addressed. Um, I'd like to thank, of course, uh, the Bahrain Fintech Bay for organizing this and putting this together, showcasing what Bahrain has to offer, the access to the Middle East. Uh, I'd encourage you all to continue sharing your questions to us, um, the um, the organizers will reach out to you uh, with the con with the contact information on how best you could reach out to the speakers or if you have any further questions about the opportunity. And just a quick plug about myself, since I forgot to start with that in the uh, beginning of this. My name is Zehan De Almeida. I'm the general manager of FinTech Australia. We are the peak advocacy body for FinTech startups here in Australia. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us as well. It's just fintechaustralia.org.au. So feel free to reach out to us. I'm happy to support in your journey as you look both ways. Uh, from Bahrain to Australia, as well as from Australia to Bahrain. We will put you in touch with the people who can support you in your journey. Um, thanks again.
thank you all for participating and yeah look forward to hearing from you all